is we got this new box blade in from Rome Plow Company up in uh, Cedar Cedar Town, Georgia, I believe it is. And got got it in the other week. We had to uh, get it shipped out of Louisiana. It's a 10 foot, they call it the uh, Double D Manufacturer, and that's the same company nowadays. If I remember right, I think the Double D owners actually bought out Rome. But anyway, this is one of their Ag series, and uh, we got it home. Now I've got it uh, unhooked from the tr tractor right there because we got to do a little welding on this thing. And just like. Um, just like with modern vehicles, you go welding on one without disconnecting the battery, you're gonna burn up the electronics in them. So, means this is a new tractor, it's got electronics. We needed to unhook the box blade from it, so we uh, don't fry the tractor. So, what we got to do on here is we're gonna we're gonna mount two brackets or plates, like a like a quarter moon plate will come in here and go over to here and that'll be on both sides so we're gonna have to relocate this uh this bar right here is to put around that rear cylinder so if you're roading it you know if your hydraulic line broke you wouldn't uh, tear everything up so we're gonna need to take that off and cut this mount off and we'll relocate that over here some over here somewhere and uh get everything ready now we've got some brackets and everything inside we'll have to do this outside because this won't fit in my little old shop so uh we'll come out here and you know do some grinding and all that stuff we we'll have to move some hoses out of the way and have to weld everything out here but move that bracket and uh, get everything ready but we got to do some trimming so let's go in the shop and we'll we'll look at our uh our plates that we got to weld on so here's the brackets that we got we got two uh half moon brackets and then we got the gussets that'll go up underneath each one of them so we actually printed the directions you know we normally wouldn't but the fine folks up there at rome they went ahead and printed some diagrams out and got them emailed to me so i know where to set everything since i gotta do it myself so if you look here this is a top view and you can see you now colors are bad on this because my printer's about out of ink. So this is these half half moon brackets right here. So one will go on each side. Now what it is is the mast for the laser receiver. I don't know if I said, but what we're doing on this box blade is we're putting a laser system on it. So we'll be able to go fully automatic. So normally Rome would, you know, they could build this in house, put this kit on there, but since I ordered this, I ended up getting it out of a dealer in uh, Louisiana, had it shipped up here, and then Rome sent me the plates direct, and they are putting together the laser-ready package direct. And what that will consist of is we'll have a valve, a hydraulic valve, that our hoses for our up and down cylinder will get rerouted into, and then it'll mount on one of these plates, and on the other plate is where we'll mount the mast assembly for the receiver for the laser receiver so we can mount all that on the job site once that comes in we'll just drill the holes into these plates once we get all that so what we got to do though to get it ready is weld all these on and we got to weld the gussets on underneath now they use this kit on several different pieces of equipment they said um, I actually talked to the vice president up there the other day pretty good long conversation on the phone talking about this stuff so i'm gonna have to do a little trimming so we look at this next drawing there is the uh that piece we were just looking at out there that we would wrap around this cylinder in transport mode if we was gonna road it down the road but we got to put that over here on this frame rail somewhere so they give this now here um I think my, yeah i ain't got my stuff in the and you got my stuff organized. So if you look right here, this is the underneath view. It shows we'll weld the plates on and run gussets. So we got to do a little trimming on the gussets. Um, so this right here, this diagram is going to give us what we need to do on the gussets. So we're going to come an inch and three eighths in. So, so we take this gusset right here. 
opposite like we got it right there. So this guy said, it looks like we're going to come an inch and three eighths in, and then we're going to notch it out going this way. And you can see it's right there. It looks like you're going to take the corner off of it. That's going to be a piece that goes up in that mold board. And then the other gusset, we got to take a, a good bit more off of that. So I think what we'll do is uh, start scribing some lines on these and get these ready. I don't know if I'm going to cut them with a bandsaw or just take the torch and cut them off. So let me get things ready and we'll, we'll do some layout. So I went ahead and just ground off some of this paint a little bit. Hopefully make it a little bit easier to see. So we have two brackets. They're both the same, but they both. Uh, so we have two two sets of brackets. The both sets are cut the same as they came, but we need to make them a little bit different. So keep getting confused. I got two of them right in front of me here. And what I'm gonna do is lay this first one out. So it looks like on this first one. We're going from this end, we're going to come over an inch and three eighths and we're going to make a mark down. And that is going to be a quarter inch down. And we'll scribe that across. And then we'll come three eighths in from this side and put us a reference mark. And that'll be the beginning of an angle cut coming down. So pretty simple. So I was going to put my little blue marker on here because I don't have no dicum, but I don't know if that marker had been sitting out too long, but he wouldn't want to cooperate. So I'm just going to scribe them. Now, these ain't got to be perfect. These ain't going to be seen. We still want to get them, you know, pretty good. But they're not going to be seen, so we don't have to worry about a whole lot. So first deal from the end, make sure I got these orientated right. See, we're 90 degree right there. So we're going to come an inch and three eighths off that end right there. We're going to see if I can see what I'm doing here. So there's one inch right there. One eight, two eighths, and three eighths. We're gonna put a mark right there. All right. I don't know how many of these things I got, and I can't ever find the ones that I want. I got these nice big fancy toolboxes in here I bought a while back, and uh, well, I haven't been doing a lot in the shop the last year. I've been kind of lazy, and it's just an outright disaster in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put this scribe line down right here. I'm just gonna make that plenty long. About time to sharpen my little scriber right there. That's just a, I think it was a Torx. And I took a grinder to it, which I'll take a grinder to it real quick. Yeah. As long as you don't get it too hot, you won't lose it. Quick. All right, so we got that right there. So we got a scribe in right there. And while I'm thinking about it, here, let's go ahead and do it on this one too. Move this out. So an inch from the end, one, two, three eighths right there. Now we'll go ahead and put that in there. I would have some tunes on, but then you know the YouTube police or all whichever thing we put this on will be after us, you know. All right, so we got that. And we know it's going to be a quarter inch down. What that what that's going to do is that's going to that's a relief we're putting in. As you can see there, it's going to be a relief to go underneath that existing angle iron on that mold, that back mold board, most likely. So let's set let's set this at a quarter inch. It's really too big of a deal for what we're going to use it for, but we're going to make it happen. I'm going to go just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. And I'm going to see if I can slide this and get a halfway decent mark on there. Might be better if I clamp these things down. This, uh, this other one cut out on the bandsaw, but that old bandsaw blade's uh, showing up on the doll side. And 
I got two boxes hanging on the wall by that thing, blade boxes, and you know, neither one of them had a new bandsaw blade in them, so that's when not doing much in the shop for a while can really mess you up. So we're going to cheat. We're going to pop fire on this one. We're just going to burn these suckers off. Like I said, you know, it's not really going to be seen. And I ain't used torch in a spell either, so, but hey, we'll, we'll make it happen. Got that one cut off and it went a whole lot quicker than what it did on that bandsaw. And it ain't pretty. But you know, we can fix pretty with a grinder. So we'll let that cool spell. I say we'll go ahead and lay out these other two. Well, while that other one over there is cooling down a spell, we'll get the old restructure cons out and let's we'll see what we got for this one right here. Now these, like I said, all four of these are the same brackets. They use them on multiple things. You kind of got to do a little adjustment to make them fit. Those two that we just cut actually go up underneath the back mold board, which is the piece of angle iron, and just the, uh, the tip of them right here actually sticks out in front, and this will be up underneath those quarter moon pieces. All right, so on these here, You know, if we look at this diagram right here, it looks like those things are made a little different than what they sent me anyway. So, now we'll get lucky not have to do much trimming. So, on these, we need six inches wide to that line right there. And they're going to be four inches tall. So, let's see what we got. This diagram's drawn a little bit different. I think we, we may not have that exact one. So, let's see what we got. So what we got is actually six inches. So we're not gonna have to do near as much trimming as we thought. That's so on these, it looks like we're gonna do something similar. We are going to have a similar relief in them. Well, on further review, we are gonna get lucky. And that does not happen very often, especially with me. I was looking at this drawing right here and it was, Actually showing this gusset is sloped on the back side. That is not what we have. The four that we have are all identical. So the two we just previously cut, we had to put that relief in for the angle iron, which what we were doing is we was cutting relief for right there. So it can just set up underneath that angle iron because this plate's gonna set on top of that. It sits right on top of this floor before. There's a weld seam in there for a brace, but uh, what they're showing is we're going to have to trim this down and put a relief in there for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, but it wasn't needed. This tongue piece is four inches. It's four inch square tubing. So, you know, they have this four inch mark on this plan, but we don't have to do none of that relief. So what we'll actually do, this is a six inch piece right here. They're talking about, you know, cutting it because it was tilted on this bottom. But we ain't going to have to do that. So we are going to get easy. All we're going to have to do is come down four inches and cut this sucker off right on the bottom. Now I am going to relieve this corner. Um, so when I do put it underneath this disc, we just, we just ain't got to worry about nothing. So we'll just relieve that. We'll come down four inches. We're going to cut this tail off of it. Something actually got easy. Y'all hear Mr. Frost barking over there. There's a, a dog next door he won't do a little socializing with. and He can't go over there because of his collar. I reckon he's trying to get that old dog attention. So, you know, we could actually mount these, weld these in there and leave them. But that'd be sticking down and it just wouldn't look real good. So, let's just take this. And let's just scribe us a line here and see if we can just do it without doing any layout or anything else. Yeah, 
Yeah. So, we'll clamp this one down. And we'll just burn it off with torch. And then we'll take John and clean it up. We'll clean up that one that's over there on that table, cooling down. And these things will actually be ready to weld on then. So, we need to cut that off. We need to cut this corner out. Nice and simple. Nothing to it. Let's see if we can get that done.